Hoffman, welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Crystal Paco. So glad he could join us. His fate will be left to a jury. Trial starts on December 20th for Jonathan Ross Pangolina, the man charged with killing his co-worker, Liebrick Menglotnia. Earlier this year, the men got into a fight after a mess tomorrow celebration at their work. The fight ended with Menglotnia on the pavement beaten to death. KUM files show defense has argued that the medical examiner may have ch changed his opinion of the cause of death after seeing surveillance footage of the incident. According to defense, the men were engaged in mutual combat and Menglotnia died from trauma caused by a fall that happened after the fight. It's a problem in most villages. Stray dogs are roaming the streets, posing a public health hazard, as well as threatening passersby like runners or children walking to and from the bus stop. What can we do to control the numbers? Here's more. The bottom line is it's a growing problem. It's always been a problem, and it continues to grow. Johnny Mayor Jesse Bloss is talking about stray dogs. About a week and a half ago, there's a lady who normally takes this, this road, Palantad Road, as, as her route for running. And she does, does it on a daily basis. And she had walked into my office and was concerned because she got bit. She was bitten by the dogs. Stray dog numbers are out of control. A count of the island's stray dog population shows thousands of canines without a place to call home, leaving them to areas like the jungle. Palanta, this, the Palanta area in the village where we see a lot of our stray dogs because and there's a lot of jungle here, places where they can hide. So anyone can be walking, running, riding a bike, and they come out of nowhere. And these dogs are somewhat aggressive especially when they're looking for food. Approximately 25,000 strays and counting. Guam Animals in Need Executive Director Allison Hadley says that count was done in 2014. Spaying and neutering is pretty much the number one way to handle this situation, though. Um, it's, it's, it's the only way. Um, you can't kill your way out of the situation. It's, it's spaying and neutering only because um, if you... Uh, just try and kill your way out of it, you basically create what's called the vacuum effect. If you remove a population of stray animals um, from their kind of their general area, because we have such a problem, there's just going to be a new group that moves in right away. Um, so the best thing to do is spaying and neutering and then um, basically allowing them to live out their lives in their established territory. But of course, if they are aggressive and that sort of thing, like we are seeing uh, more and more often. Fortunately, the Jotnia runner is doing okay. She continues to run. This time she's carrying a nice uh, broomstick with her when she runs, and that's to protect her. But she continues to run because she likes to run. It's a really nice area to go and run in the morning. But again, she's looking out to protect herself. So now she's carrying a long broomstick with her. She followed protocol, seeking medical attention and reporting it to authorities. The first thing if you get bit is you need to go to the hospital. You just need to go to the hospital first and foremost. And you need to inform animal control or gain or both uh, because we need to know. We need to know where this animal is at um, because there may not be rabies on Guam right now, but it's not if, it's when. I mean, it's, it's a very real thing. We've had rabies in the past and it was, it's a very scary situation. You know, people did pass away and we really, because we have such a much larger number of dogs nowadays, it would be, it would be a really bad thing to get involved with. So um, take, take those steps and then um, animal control and gain will work together to try and remove that animal, figure out what's going on. Hadley admits agencies and groups working to control stray numbers are often underfunded and understaffed. Another roadblock, the price of spaying and neutering, which is why gain continues efforts to make it as affordable and as accessible as possible get your animals fixed. We don't need any more animals on this island. Um, we should just try and focus on the group that's here now and, you know, keep them healthy, keep them safe, keep the people safe, and then, um, you know, just kind of go from there. For more information or to report a dog bite, call GAIN at 653-4246 or Animal Control at 379-66. Although FEMA individual assistance for Typhoon Mankut was denied, the U.S. Small Business Administration is on island offering low-interest federal disaster loans to Guam businesses, nonprofit organizations, homeowners and renters. Joan Agancharferis has more. 
Cynthia Cowell is the Public Information Officer with the Small Business Administration Office of Disaster Assistance and is currently on island with other representatives to help island residents who were affected by Typhoon Mankut, which struck the island in early September. SBA disaster loans offer an affordable way for individuals and businesses to recover. We are offering a uh, disaster loan program that's available to businesses of all sizes, to private nonprofit organizations, homeowners and renters. As soon as we found out that the uh, presidential declaration was declined, denied, then um, SBA came in on its own authority to help out whoever we can. A disaster loan outreach center has been set up at the Istanbul Gym in Dededo since Tuesday and is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. There are computers set up and they can walk you through the application process. Once that has happened, we will look at the damages. And I know a lot of people have already made their repairs and moved on. But if you saved your receipts, if you had pictures, things of that nature, by all means, apply because we can reimburse you for that. Though the center will be open for the next couple of weeks, the application filing deadline for physical damage is February 5th of next year and for economic injury, September 9th of next year. For homeowners, SBA can offer up to $200,000. And for homeowners that rent, they can get up to $40,000. For homeowners, they need to show that they own the property and that they are responsible for the repairs. And for renters, if they don't own the property, but they are responsible for the repairs, they need to bring a copy of their lease so that they can show this. But the main thing is apply. According to Cowell, for businesses and private nonprofit organizations, they can loan up to $2 million for physical damage or economic injury. Which is something that happens to a business when it has to shut down for a period of time or tourism has dropped off. Um, the electricity was out for a couple of weeks. They just lost income because of that. We can offer working capital loans so that a business can stay in business and pay their mortgage, pay their bills, uh, keep their employees in, on staff until things pick up. If you don't make it to the Outreach Center, you can go online and apply at disasterloan.sba.gov slash ELA. And for more information, you can call the Customer Service Center at 800-659-2955. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Goncharfres. One local firefighter with U.S. Naval Base Guam Fire and Emergency Services recently obtained the highest medical qualification an emergency responder can receive and is the first on island to do so. Joan has more. Since 2011, Agate resident and Guam Air National Guardsman Ramel Magan has been a firefighter and emergency medical technician with the U.S. Naval Base Guam. And it's something that he's always wanted to do. After becoming a firefighter, you know, I started getting into the EMS field and, man, I just fell in love with it, so I wanted to take it to the next level. The next level? Well, that would be the National Registry EMT Paramedic Certification, which is the highest and most difficult to obtain. There's four levels. There's an EMR, um, there's an EMT, there's an advanced EMT, and then there's a paramedic, which is the highest level um, a person that can attain for a pre-hospital setting. So what made him decide to go for such certification? I was an EMT and I always wanted to progress so when I got the opportunity to do it I said I'm gonna take this you know I want to provide better care you know while in the field or while wherever I'm at so I said I'm gonna go in and do it I just want to become better. Magan approached his chiefs explaining to them how much he wanted to do this program and because the program is not available on Guam he had to seek elsewhere, specifically Texas A&M University. I used my post 9-11 GI Bill, which, which I got from the military, um, told him I'm going to go out, scheduled everything out, and uh, went out there and did my course. It was a rigorous course and fast-paced. McGon took the accelerated program, which is roughly nine months long, but being driven and determined, he was able to complete the course and certification in a record time of six months and finish top of his class. What this means? He brings the highest level of care. As a paramedic, Magan is considered advanced life support and can administer a range of medications, assist patients with respiratory complications, and perform advanced electrical and invasive surgical interventions. 
like I like to put it as a, a walking nurse in a way. So we get to do all kinds of stuff that we can do in a hospital setting. Naval Base Guam Fire Chief Gifton A. Lawrence says it adds to their capability. Our scope of service is to provide advanced life support services to Naval Base Guam installations, and we also provide advanced life support services and basic life support services to the community through our mutual aid agreement. According to Fire Chief Lawrence, he hopes that Magan's story motivates and inspires other local firefighters to achieve such certification, adding that his accomplishment is truly significant to Naval Base Guam Fire and Emergency Services. Magan, he represents um, a field of firefighters that's motivated. Um, this is not a job for him. This is a proud profession and we're glad to have him. Of course, none of this would be possible without a strong support system, namely his wife, Jimelina and his daughter Faith. My wife definitely supported me. I mean, she was the one that um, pretty much gave me the go. I talked to her before I even brought this to the table to the Chiefs and I said, you know, what do you think? You think is, is it worth it? She looked at me and said, you know, if you want that, if this is what you really want to do, I'm not going to stop you. You, you, know, you only live once and make the best out of it. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gincharfris. Every year around Christmas time, Santa makes a special visit to Guam's elementary schools. Though he's not carrying a sack of toys, instead he supplies the gift of school necessities. Carmen Terlahi has the story. <laughs> Children were eagerly waiting for Santa's visit. Santa and Mrs. Claus arrived in a red fire truck to Juan M. Guerrero Elementary School, greeting the crowds of students. With Santa's helpers from Docomo Pacific, they spread Christmas cheer and handed out special gifts. I come here from the North Pole just to help pass out some school supplies for a nonprofit that needed some help. And so the Rotary Club of Tumon Bay invited me, and Docomo invited me, and Isla Guam invited me, and First Hawaiian Bank invited me, so here I am. Not your typical toys. Santa says gifting students with new school supplies helps kids stay on the nice list at school. This nonprofit that supported this realizes it, that education is very important for children. Christmas is halfway through the school year. And so for many of them, they've broken their crayons, they've broken their pencils, their com composition books are compositioned out. And so this gives them all the stuff they need for the second half so that they can really get a good education and study hard. And Santa Claus is all about education. It's a tradition that Santa looks forward to every year. Santa's been coming here and helping this nonprofit for nine years. And so far, Santa has helped them do about 35,000 banks of school supplies. This is all about companies and corporations and people who have giving back to the community and helping the children. And I think that's a great thing. And so for all of them, Santa gives you a big thumbs up. The Christmas duo will be checking their list twice at every village elementary school. Their next stop is Liguan Elementary next week, Friday. Reporting for Guangzhou Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Chilaki. Stay tuned next on Weekend Edition, Trend Spotting and Still to Come, the Guam Crime Stoppers Report. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Cheers to 80 years! It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and one round trip flyaway for two to Manila. So how do you enter? Calvo's Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. Non-Calvo's customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit calvos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. This year is rapidly coming to an end, and the big finish is now on at Cars Plus and Mighty. Get big year in deals on a big selection of new Ram trucks with savings up to $10,500. Or save up to $5,500 on a new Chrysler Pacifica. How about a new Jeep Compass? Save up to $5,000. With financing as low as 1.99%. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value card with every vehicle purchase. The big finish means big savings right now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. 
Shell's Million Miles giveaway is back. And we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus Miles to 10 lucky winners. So how do you make your getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See stores for details. Hoffman, welcome back. Many headlines cover this week caught your eye either on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Now it's time to take a look at what you had to say. Hi everyone and welcome to Trend Spotting. Here's what caught your eye on social media this week. The 45-year-old man who was reported missing in Malolo was found alive and well this past Friday, December 14th. Michael C. Guerrero was last seen crab hunting on Wednesday. Local first responders and military partners searched the area for nearly two days for signs of Guerrero. GFD spokesperson Kevin Riley confirms that Guerrero was located around 10 a.m. Friday morning, and he is in good health. GFD extends its appreciation to the community and agencies that provided assistance for this mission. Here's how the community responded during our Facebook Live coverage. Michelle Santo says, Thank you to everyone for their prayers, to the volunteers, the search and rescue team, and most especially our ancestors. Thank you for bringing my dad home. Maria Chargaloff says, God is good. Thanks to search rescue efforts, GPD, GFD, CG, and all volunteers. Due to the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018, cockfighting may become illegal on Guam. Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio says it's disappointing the community's views were not respected as she put up a fight earlier this year on the issue. Governor-elect Lou Leon Guerrero also stated, quote, I am deeply disappointed that the United States Congress has once again disrespected our local rights and cultural practices by including a ban on cockfighting in the recently passed Farm Bill. Cockfighting has historical significance on Guam and continues to be a regulated practice today." End quote. The community online had some mixed feelings about the issue. Ethan Jay argues that cockfighting is a part of Chamorro history. He states, quote, "...these things are the kind of stuff we pass from generation to generation. What now are the people going to do with all the chickens that they raise? You do know these cockfights made fun and loving memories and bonds stronger. Chickens and cockfights are like our heart and life. Like our hobby and entertainment. We live what we want and we do what we gotta do to live that way." End quote. He goes on to say that he is in disagreement with the bill. On the opposing side, Mrs. Cash 214 says, quote, "...with all due respect, animals are not for our entertainment. It is inhumane, cruel, and completely awful." End quote. With no vote in Congress, the bill for a ban on cockfighting is just waiting for President Trump to sign into law. It was an epic battle between man and fish. An avid kayak fisher catches what he says is a world record in the sport, reeling in a tuna weighing over 100 pounds. Raf Vargas is a Puerto Rican native who's lived on Guam for the past three years. Pedaling a kayak a few miles off Guam's west coast, he was patiently waiting for the perfect catch. He was about to call it a day before his luck changed. The dog-toothed tuna weighed about 170 pounds. Vargas used a method of vertical jigging with equipment intended to hold only 30 pounds. He eventually caught the monster at 700 feet deep. Vargas is proud of the record he set, caught on Guam and on camera. He now waits for the next perfect condition for another fish to bite. Here's how people responded online. Roman Solace 9 says, Congratulations on the catch. I'm glad to see we still have fish on our side of the world. We must also take control of our fishing from outside fishing boats from other countries. Thanks for joining us. Catch us next week for more trend spotting. Jason is next with your Crime Stoppers report. Two American icons are joining forces for a collaboration a century in the making. Budweiser and Jim Beam introduce the Budweiser Reserve Copper Lager, a rich lager aged on Jim Beam bourbon barrel staves with hints of vanilla and caramel rye, followed by a deliciously smooth finish.
if you get nervous about having dental treatment, you're not alone. An estimated 35 million adults experience anxiety or nervousness at the simple thought of visiting the dentist. As your dentist, I strive to make your visit as painless or pain-free as possible. And I frequently tell my patients that in the 21st century, if we can give you medicines to put your tooth asleep or medicines to take an infection or toothache away, we can surely give you something to help relax you and take all fear away. No one ought to sit in a dental chair thinking of bad childhood memories or fearing injections. If you're a dental coward, but you really do want your teeth fixed, don't wait until the pain is killing you. Come in, tell us your fears, and set up an appointment. We have convinced many that dental treatment doesn't need to be scary anymore. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. You shall never know all the good a simple smile can do. All right, everybody, it is the most wonderful time of year, a very joyous time, a very festive time, also a time that everybody needs to stay frosty. And I'm not using that as a snowman reference. I'm saying be aware of everybody else around you on the roadways. Who better to break this down than Sergeant Paul Tapao, who has seen his fair share of irresponsible driving in your day. You worked in Highway Patrol, as you said mm -hmm. many times on this program. Um, you said GPD sees an uptick because of, you know, you got office parties, general, you know, festive, you know, um, celebrations this time and people really don't watch their own alcohol consumption before they get behind the wheel right yeah absolutely and you know thank you for bringing it up you know we want to stress it that this is you know the holiday season's in full swing um, we're starting to see the christmas parties we're getting the invites to attend some of the christmas people come parties. back from the states yeah absolutely and you know um people celebrate and you know it's there's nothing wrong with celebrating but we ask that we be responsible as individuals when we're celebrating and i just want to drop it back to where where we are now with our fatalities on Guam, we are at number 22, and we have 20 fatal crashes that attributed to over 22 uh, fatalities, and you know, we're closing off the year, and being a former crash investigator, a lot of our cases that we've investigated, alcohol was the number one contributing factor to the causation of the crash. And I don't really like necessarily like to use this as a reminder, but in hindsight, and in everything that we're doing, and in everything that we continue to do, we want to tell the community and we want to ask the community, let's do our part. Let's be responsible. Give the gift of life and designate a sober, responsible driver that's going to take you home safely and it's going to help keep our road safer for everybody to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And how can people be better neighbors? And I mean, you know, people say, you know, you should carpool or you should be the designated driver. And, you know, like, are there any other tips you can give people? Plan accordingly. You know, if you're, if you're really adamant about attending this Christmas party or this function, this Christmas celebration or holiday celebration, plan accordingly. Find somebody who's willing to be the life of the party and be that responsible sober driver. And I know it really can be cumbersome for some people because everybody wants to be a part of the festivities, but you really are that important piece of the puzzle that's gonna help keep everybody safe. And you 